So this month I'm talking about Les Miserables, which is one of my favorite classic novels. One thing that I've discovered reading Les Mis four times in four different translations is that there are a lot of English translations and they are not all created equal. Some are very old, came out around the same time that the book was published, very 19th century. Others are very recent and modernized. There's a lot to choose from when you're choosing a translation of Les Mis. So let's talk about the different translations and how you might go about choosing one to read. Les Mis was published in the 1860s and there were three English translations that came out around the same time. Of those, only one is still commonly read. That's the one by Charles Wilbur in 1862. I have read this translation. It sometimes is a little bit archaic in terms of the language that's used compared to the modern ones, but it's pretty readable. 19th century is, you know, very different from something like Shakespeare. It's in the public domain, so it's very widely available. A lot of the kind of decorative editions of Les Mis that you might find at Barnes & Noble, for instance, have this translation. And the Barnes & Noble Classics edition does as well, although be aware that that one is very abridged. In the same year, another English translation was published by a man called Lascalus Raxel. This translation is not widely read anymore. I'm not super familiar with it, but from what I understand, it's viewed as not being quite as good as the translation by Charles Wilbur. And even though it's also public domain, it's not widely used in reprints of the book. However, I'm not personally familiar with this version, so there's not a huge amount that I can say about it. And then Les Mis was actually published during the American Civil War, and the third one that came out around that time was a product of the Confederacy. It was published in Virginia, and it basically took the version by Charles Wilbur and edited it to make it more palatable to a southern audience during the Civil War. So I have not read this and I'm not sure exactly what changes were made, but I would assume a lot of the references to slavery were cut out because Victor Hugo is very critical of any kind of oppression. Obviously that version is no longer widely read. Another translation of Les Mis came out in 1887 by a woman named Isabel Hapgood. Her version, even though it's more recent than Charles Wilbur's version, can sometimes be a little bit more antiquated and archaic in terms of the language that's used. It's a very formal, literal translation of the original French, sometimes at the expense of sounding good in English, in my opinion. And there's one particular translation issue in Les Mis where I'm not particularly fond of the route that she takes on it. In French, there are two words for you. Tu, which is singular and informal, and vu, which is plural and or formal. Sometimes the use of tu or vu in Les Mis is significant, and when that's the case, Hapgood distinguishes them by translating tu as thou. Technically, that's accurate. The and thou used to be our singular informal you, with you being the equivalent of the French vu but that's no longer how we use that, and even in the 19th century it wasn't. So things like that do make the Hapgood translations seem a little bit more old-fashioned even than the significantly older Wilbur translation. However, it is usually a very accurate translation, and it's public domain and widely available. This is the version that's available on Project Gutenberg, for instance. There were two English translations of Les Mis published in the 20th century, the first one in 1976 by Norman Denny. I have read this translation. It's very easy reading compared to the others, flows very smoothly, uses very approachable, modernized language. However, I will say that it translates things very differently from any of the other versions, and sometimes at the expense of accuracy. It's also very slightly abridged. So even though it doesn't cut out whole chapters or long segments, sometimes long paragraphs will be shortened or sections will be moved to an appendix when the translator thought that they were especially irrelevant. Les Mis is very long and sometimes tedious to get through, so it's your call on whether you're okay with that, but it is something to be aware of if you're considering choosing that translation. The second one from the 20th century came out in 1987 and was put together by two translators, Lee Ferenstock and Norman McAfee. This version was actually based on the original, the Wilbur translation, but it's somewhat updated. So some of the older language that might not be quite as approachable for a modern audience has been improved upon. I have not read this version, so I can't speak about it from personal experience, but I have heard very good things about it. 
And if I do choose a different translation for the next time that I read Les Mis, that's probably the one that I would go with. And then finally, already in the 21st century, there are two new versions of Les Miserables. The first one came out in 2007 and the translator's name is Julie Rose. Her version is also known for being very modernized. As far as I know, it doesn't make the kind of changes or small abridgments that the Dunny version does, but it does modernize a lot of the language to the point of using modern slang that wouldn't have been around in the 19th century. So for example, the Thenardier's inn is referred to as a greasy spoon and Fontaine's boyfriend is a high roller. Those words aren't there in the original, that's just using modernized language in order to get the meaning across. I've not read this version myself, so I can't really give my personal opinion on it. And then the most recent translation came out in 2013 by Christine Doniger. Hers is another modernized version as compared with the older 19th century translations, but it tends to hold back a little bit more than the Julie Rose translation in terms of striking a balance between making it more understandable to modern readers without using too much overly modern language. This is the version that I read this time around and I really liked it. I thought that it struck a good balance between being overly antiquated and overly modern. It was relatively easy to read compared to, for instance, the Isabel Hapgood translation, but it seemed more complete and authentic than the Norman Denny translation. I really appreciated her extensive use of footnotes and endnotes to explain historical context and literary references and things like that, because Victor Hugo uses a lot of those and they're often not familiar to the modern reader. And I also really liked how she handled French grammatical issues like the use of to versus vous that we talked about earlier. She usually made a footnote explaining which one was being used and why it was significant, which I thought was very well done. So of the four translations that I have read, this one's definitely my favorite, but I think that which one would be best for you is really dependent on what you're looking for. Are you looking for a very authentic 19th century reading experience? Or are you looking for something that is a little bit more easy to read and approachable? Do you care about it being super authentic to exactly what was said in French? Or are you more interested in it flowing well and sounding nice in English? Which version you'll want to choose will be largely dependent on those things. The other thing that I wanted to mention is how to find out who the translator is. So sometimes it'll say right there on the cover, but in a lot of cases it won't. So if it doesn't say on the cover, usually you can turn to the title page and it'll have the translator's name there. Or you can go to the copyright page. Usually it'll have both the translator's name and the year that the translation was published. 